Good morning, folks. We've got some good news on the space weather front, some space news that changes the game on a number of levels, if it's true. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet. Some minor surface movements is about all we notice in 193 angstroms. Over in 304 angstroms, you can see how minor plasma lifts on the limb confirm it was a day of minor activity only, no significant ejections, and no flashes of solar flares. All the sunspots are in decay at the moment, leaving no magnetic complexity on the Earth-facing disk. Solar wind here. We've waited for an impact and we did indeed get one, but it was of the same magnetism and almost identical speed and density in the afternoon hours. That is lucky because it gave only a nudge back to geomagnetism in the second half of the day. We've now begun to recover from the storm conditions, which is what we all want to see before anything more intense arrives. And indeed, the fact that we went 24 hours without such a more intense impact suggests that anything that does arrive now will be weaker than what would worry the world. This coronal hold departs today while a new one is already crested on the north. Moving now to the lithosphere where the seismic silence was shattered yesterday by a magnitude 6.9 event that struck very shallow in Chile. It startled many, but didn't cause too much grief and it is worth noting that the event struck near the southern tip of the Chilean red alert that existed at that time, with the affected area stretching more than 100 miles into the alert covering nearly 10-15% to 15 of it. Also folks, it appears we have the first big quake predicted by one of you over at QuakeWatch.net. Congratulations to Terence Allen, who actually only had four countries on alert in the entire world at that time, and some of those did not carry such a high magnitude warning. Congratulations again, and Nine Risi hasn't even upgraded the forecasting tools and map makers yet. You might want to get in early beforehand. Up next, so NASA is starting to think that this is what the heliosphere looks like. I'm excited and cautious, and here's why. The standard model of the heliosphere has it looking like a comet with a tail and streaming fields and plasma behind it, but now they say that interstellar magnetism must be much stronger than they thought. You catch that one? Basically saying that science has undervalued space electromagnetism for, um, ever. But as much as that puts songs in our hearts, the entire conclusion is based on how fast the tail reacts to solar wind changes in activity over the 11-year sunspot cycle. They change as fast as the nose, and so instead of seeing the entire construct as electrically connected and reactive, they conclude that they must react together because they're the same distance from the star, therefore a spherical bubble. Not sure that one passes the electrical smell test, but... We need to move on. Cassini is about to dive in between the rings of Saturn. Its grand finale has already begun, and it will do a series of last orbits that will take it incredibly close above the clouds, and then, in September, for an entire minute, Cassini will be sending back readings from inside the atmosphere, a first for science. After that, it will disintegrate and be gone. Super cool, I know, but also this, as it was flying by Titan a bit ago, it noted that the twilight side of the moon is brighter than the daylight side. Sure, why not? Makes sense. Anyway, there is yet another article out describing how the planet reacts to extra CO2 by eating it. Whether it's plankton or plants, the natural regulation of atmospheric chemistry on our world is gearing up to the point scientists can't ignore it. Meanwhile, Temperatures geared down in eastern Canada as a freezing rain record has been obliterated in St. John's. Times like this, I am glad I live in the desert. Last but not least, folks, two excellent papers out about the magnetic variation and anomalies before the Great Japan Earthquake and Fukushima disaster of 2011. The amount of electromagnetic data suggesting something was about to happen is astounding, and you can consider this like the cousin of our own forecasting model, which uses other types of electromagnetic variability. Folks, when we hit the windy maps here, you're going to see major weather concerns in every single frame. Please take heed of your local warnings. After that, we've got some null school maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again right here tomorrow. It's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.